Salut tout le monde, Christine L here, and ta-da, we've got a diamond painting finish. Yay! I can hear you all clapping. Um, so this is, uh, it's called Kitsune. The artist is Anthony Christou, and the kit was from Treasure Studios Art. So, yay! I'm glad this one is, you know, beautiful. It's done. Um... So, yeah, I don't, let's just get right into it. So, um, normally what I to do is kind of like the positives and negatives of working on it. We will cover how many drills were left over, what was the trash like, and as well as I'd like to put together some like fun stats or whatever on, on how long it took me to finish the painting. So, as a whole, I think it's absolutely beautiful and it shows up very lovely on camera. And I have to tell you that the sparkle on this is really, really good. Um, the last Diamond Art Club that I worked on, I remember thinking that they felt kind of, um, not dull, but a bit more muted. Like maybe they weren't, honestly, I don't think their drills were cut as strongly as they are. They tend to feel a bit more rounded. So in these, you can, um, zoom in. There we go. So you can see there's like really harsh cut in terms of like, you can really see, you know, the edges and the straight lines. So it really makes it sparkle and pop and jump. So I think this was really well done. Now, the benefit of Treasure Studios art is that their drills, so the, this is a round kit, but their round drills um, I should probably be using past tense because I think they're going to change this for sourcing issues. But their round drills were the same size as everybody else's square drills. So normally square drills are 2.5 millimeters and round drills are 2.8 millimeters. So Treasure Studios, they used 2.5 millimeter round drills to create this kit. What that does in the grand scheme of things, it allows you to put more drills in each little area than... Um, you know, when they're 2.8, they're a little bit bigger. It would cause more crowding. More drills means more details, um, which is a good thing. That's what we want to see in our diamond paintings. Um, now, like I mentioned, I do believe that they have, I think at one point in time, they mentioned that they will no longer be doing 2.8 or 2.5 millimeter round drills because it's just very hard for them to source that size. In my opinion, Instead of Diamond, um, excuse me, instead of Treasure Studios art going to the standardized drills, I don't understand why everybody doesn't do 2.8 millimeter drills. Is there, or 2.5 millimeter drills? Why doesn't everybody go to smaller rounds so that you can fit more detail and more aspects into each diamond painting? Um, maybe there's some sort of industry standard around 2.8 millimeters in terms of the actual production. I don't know, um, but I'm of the opinion that everybody should have gone to 2.5. <laughs> but regardless, um, so this was one of the older kits. I purchased this quite a bit. If you want to, I will link the unboxing so you can check that out for yourself if you want to see my first initial impressions overall. So this was, you know, it was fun to do. Um, and I think, you know, overall it came out very pretty. Like the fox looks lovely. The eyes are nice. You know, it don't, they don't look like dark little chunks. Uh, um, the tail shading is very clearly done. And I think that's wonderful. I like the moon, very round. Um, but let's get into the negatives. So the biggest negative for me, and this is more of a personal preference, is that this is computer charted. This is not hand rendered. There is no one, no actual person who went in and fixed it pixel by pixel. This was basically, they took an image, put it in an image processing software and the software said, okay, here's where your dots are going to be. Um, how do we know that? The quickest way to tell is that there is no solid line. So each line, and if we take the tail as an example, if you're used to Diamond Art Club, you're used to solid black lines or solid lines. Here we can tell there's no solid white line. Everywhere I point, the drills are changing color. So to create these lines, there's about five or six colors at least in there. So what that means is you're going to have a lot more confetti, which I don't personally mind. I don't mind having to change colors often. 
Um, I'm actually kind of a fan of that. I like that about diamond painting. Uh, and it's just, like I said, it creates a complete lack of solid lines. And a lot of this, what we call kind of like noise, where it's just different colors sprinkled in. There's no solid transitions anywhere. And I, like I said, that is a personal preference. The benefit of having computer stuff is that it looks more realistic. So this does not look like a cartoon fox. This looks like an actual animal that someone might have snapped a picture of, theoretically. Um, so some people really prefer that. They really prefer it to look like a picture that was turned into a diamond painting. Whereas I like the artistic, cartoony, um, I'm a fan of sort of like 8-bit art to the old video games and things like that where it was just, you know, pixel-based. And so I can appreciate that art of it um, that this just doesn't do it for me. Like you can see, you know, there's random blues in the leg, which are probably shading. And um, again, I don't know if the thumbnail will show it. No, see, this one won't. If I can find a picture of the original art, I'll insert it here. to show you that there are markings or maybe ruins, runes, not ruins, runes on um, the fox's body that just are not coming across. So again, another benefit of hand charting or someone going in and creating this image would have been that they would have been able to change pixels and add the runes into this fox's body and really make those pop. And you can kind of get a sense of the waterfall back here. It's really nice. Um, you know, but again, you might have been able to more clearly identify um, the little fireflies rather than, at least I think that's what they are, if I remember correctly. So rather than them looking like blobs of color, you could have clearly outlined, you know, a body and wings, etc. Now, the other thing that's kind of different about Treasure Studios art is that their glue, see, I had to use um, washi because their glue goes way, way past the image itself. So they claim that their glue is not a double-sided adhesive and it is not a poured glue. It is something that they call mounted glue. This is the first Treasure Studios canvas that I've worked on. And in my opinion, it worked and functioned just like a double-sided adhesive. What I mean by that is it didn't have the same bounce or resiliency as poured glue does. Um, you can kind of see that when you maybe try to like, like if you put a drill down in the wrong space and you try to just nudge it with your pen um, into the, the next spot over, with a poured glue, you can do that. It'll kind of slide across before it really starts to adhere. With this, you couldn't do that. What happened when I did that is I dragged the glue. So then it created like white markings. And then I sometimes wasn't even able to read the symbol underneath. So that made me think of double-sided adhesive. And the, that because that kind of happens with that as well. The other thing I will say, despite the fact that this is like 2.8 millimeter, or sorry, 2.5 millimeter drills instead of 2.8, the canvas felt cramped. While I was working on it, I felt like, I think even kind of rubbing my hand over, mm -hmm. yep. So even while rubbing my hand over it, I can tell that there are some drills that are still sticking up. In other words, they just aren't sitting flush to the canvas. And therefore I have to, again, use my diamond painting pen. Sorry, I've got my notes there. My diamond painting pen to like push and nudge the drills into place. Um, a very easy fix to that would be to just increase the drill size phase up like, you know, each space for the drills by like just like a fraction of a millimeter or something like that. And it gives it a bit more breathing room. Again, not a huge deal breaker. They're not massively popping off and I wasn't having huge issues. But as you saw, as I run my hand over, I can feel, I can feel them popped up and I can like, I get the urge to like have to push them down and I can hear them occasionally snapping as I do that, which means that they were sticking. So you see it's happening. So note to self, stop running your hand over it and get yourself a brayer or rolling pin to fix that. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it. So 
So one of the other issues I had with the canvas was symbol clarity. And um, I'll share a picture here. So this is X and Y. They were very similar blues, potentially even just one DMC code off of each other, I think. So they're neighboring colors. And on the canvas, they just look way too similar. So yeah, so that that just for me, while well, I had to be very careful, and there were some times where I was like, oh, that was an X, not a Y, and I was like, eh, screw it, and I just moved on, because that's, that's just kind of how I am. I am not going to fiddle to that extent. So again, that's just little things, but they do make this overall experience not a super positive one. Um, it's beautiful. I did enjoy working on it. Yeah, there we go. All finished up. And, um, I don't know. It's a, it's a mixed bag. I didn't hate it, but it seems like I did because I mentioned a lot of negatives. Um, but it's just kind of like for what I paid, I would have wanted a smoother, easier experience. Uh. Taking a look at the drills before we get into the trash, um, this is everything that I had left over. I had plenty of everything, and in some colors, is this 803, 3842? See, some of them I didn't even like finish the bag, and some of them are like way more left over than I needed. Um, it, it was weird. Like, some I don't think any colors got really close or worried me at all. But you can tell the difference between some having a whole lot left over and only a little bit left over. I don't think this is a positive or negative. I think this is pretty standard for any kit. Um, I think this is the nature of adding drills or extra drills based on a percentage. So if you, if you have a standard where you're going to add an extra... 10%, let's say, I'm using an easy to calculate number. So let's say your, your standard as a company is that you add an extra 10%. Well, if there's only 100 drills of one color, then all you're gonna get for your 10% is an extra 10 drills. Not a lot, and that's where you're gonna kinda get to a point where you're like, ooh, yikes, I might run out of a color, you know, or that'll make you kind of sweat a little bit. But if you have a section that has something like 5,000 drills, well, then you're going to get an extra 500. So that's where you're going to get a case where you're like left at the end with a whole bunch left over. And you're like, why is there so much of this color? So in my opinion, I don't know. I, I would rather see a company say we add an extra thousand drills to each color. So it's going to seem like a lot. Um, and you probably will be left over, but it'll kind of like even out where you won't have such a crap ton of some colors and then like barely a thimble full of another color. So just some thoughts on that. But like I said, this is neither a positive or negative. That's pretty standard. Most, um, if not all, do it based on a percentage of the required number of drills. So, you know, if it's 20%, 30%, whatever it is, they add that much more. So if you have a small amount in, in the whole painting itself, then you're going to have a small amount when it comes to extras. So the benefit of that is if you spill this, well, you're, you're good. You've got a lot. But if you were to spill this color and you lost a few, you're up Poops Creek, right? So especially if it's a company that doesn't have any kind of guarantees of sending you or oopsie insurance or anything like that where they're going to replace, then it's not so fun. But again, this is, you know, more than enough to finish the painting. So I was happy. So overall, I didn't worry or start to panic at any point in time. I mean, there was a few times I was like, oh my God, like there's just, I mean, there's way too many of some colors in here. So let's take a look at the trash. So I had um, sort of like a separate little container off to the side that I was keeping the extra drills in. Um, and I've put this in a clear boat just so you can get an idea of what the trash kind of looks like. This, in my opinion, is a lot of trash. And there is a lot more in there that I just didn't even pull out. So the majority of what we're seeing um, essentially are air bubbles. So I don't like to use drills that have holes in them. 
we do have you know the few standard extra pieces of trash but what i found surprisingly intense is the number of drills that had incorrect colors so it's like a mix of two or like a piece of a different or, or basically like the plastic from another color another dye lot made it into the drills i'm just going to shake them off camera so i don't make anyone sick let me get, see if we can get that a bit more but yeah so dual colored and drills like this here where you can see there's like a pop of blue so i removed those because again that's not the color it's supposed to be and overall it may affect the final image so i i don't know in a 70 by 50 i think this is kind of a lot of trash and like I said, there was more. I had to pull out a lot of drills that were concave, a lot of drills with two colors, a lot of drills with just general like air bubbles in them. So, you know, that takes away from the fun as well. I had to be very careful. I mean, are there trash drills that made it into the painting itself? Probably, um, because after a while, you, I mean, you're going to miss some, especially when you multi-place. And sometimes you just get tired of pulling them out or pulling them off the canvas once they make it on there. So just, you know, again, something to think about. Um, but since there aren't very many diamond or drill manufacturers, this is kind of common across a lot of companies. So yeah, I, I, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, but I've had worse. <clears throat> I've had worse. So there's that. So my favorite part of any diamond painting finish, of course, is the stats. So I will put that on screen for us right here. Um, and then we can take a look at how this went. So I started this on the 13th of June and I finished on the 26th of August. And it is a 70 by 50 centimeter um, drill area. Now, it's not exactly 70 by 50 there's a little bit of wiggle room, probably I'd say the width of maybe one drill, one and a half drills around each edge. So it's not perfectly, but it is the design size, not the actual entire canvas. So I would consider this true to size. So it was done in 19 sessions. So obviously I didn't work on it from the 13th of June to the 26th of August on consecutive days. But overall it was 19 days or 19 sessions of diamond painting to complete. For a total of 54 hours and 56,000 drills placed. So it's probably a little less than 56,000 because like I said, it's a little less than 70 by 50. But it's kind of, it falls in average and actually probably a little faster than normal because I used a multi-placer over the course of this whole project, which um, I think is the first time. Previous project, I think I had only partially done multi-placing. And now I'm kind of, I'm, I'm getting used to it and it's part of my normal process. So from beginning to end with this one, I did use um, a multi-placer. So well, that's it. That's all. This was Kitsune from Treasure Studios Art. I enjoyed it and I do love the final result, but there were some bumps along the way. Um, I do have my next kit started already, my next image started, I'm good to go, I'm quite happy with it. And so far, much smoother experience. So check out, if you like to see the progress of my diamond paintings, as opposed to just seeing an unboxing and then straight to finishing, Catch my floss tube every two weeks because at the beginning of those, I always show the current diamond painting I'm working on and how far or how much progress I've made. So I've kind of just started merging that into my floss tubes. So people who diamond paint as well as crochet and um, cross stitch, which is really the bulk of it, they get to, you know, you get to see this project that I'm also working on as well. Thank you so much for watching. Remember that a sloppy crafter is a happy crafter. A la prochaine!